So just say who you are and... Uh, Carol Hunter and I'm from the Lambert Roads. So Carol, tell us about where you grew up. I grew up in Barrafield Street. My mother was the first person to get a new house in Barrafield Street in 1943. And what was it like? It was, it was my memories, it was a huge, it was three bedrooms and a big long hall and a kitchenette and a bathroom with hot water. It was a dream, I <laughs> saw and then I left there when I was 20, got married, and I lived in Lovely Street in Dumanock, and it was a single end, an outside toilet, which I wasn't used to. Uh, and then in 1963, I bought a two-bedroom house in Dumanock Road, and I was there in 1978. And uh, five children there. Oof, goodness me. And uh, where did you go to school? Uh, my children went to Strathclyde Street School mm -hmm. and it was a fabulous school. It was a small school. They were going to close it down because there were only nine to eight children in it. And I went and I spoke, I never spoke in my life because I've got a gruff voice and I don't like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> and I went and I spoke and I said they wanted us to cross the, the kids in a, a, the man at school. And I says, no, my wee son got killed coming out of Strathclyde School and I was in the centre of my cross the busy roads. So we got a position for a zebra crossing and two years later my, grand, my daughter got knocked down on the zebra crossing. So two of your kids? Well, she didn't get killed, she was a but face. Still. Aye. My, my son was killed outright That's in 1972, terrible. six years and ten months old. That's terrible. But, uh, the, the years other than these two tragedies, the years in Doman Roads, to me, it was great. The neighbours were great. I worked in two different dairies in Doman Roads, and the young Neds, as they were called, never had a problem with one of them. They come in, they go high, and uh, they maybe say, there's a pound, and it was maybe only 80 pence. Then they would come in the next week and say, Carol, I've not got enough money. Could I have a pie and a bottle of juice? And I used to say, certainly, we'll hand you in the money on Thursday. And I used to say, the friend of what they give them in the want, because they will bring the money in. They were, I had no one complaint about it down the man the road. I thought the, the neighbours and everything were so kind if you were ill. They would have brought you up a pot of soup. Moved to Brother Glen. And it was a chain scene or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I was a townie eh? and I was in the welcome in Rutherland. Been there 45 years and I think I started to kind of <laughs> get used to me. <laughs> it's odd, we've been talking about this, how Rutherland's not part of Glasgow and yet, and yet on the other side of the so river it is part right, of Glasgow. Yeah, well, it, was, it went, it lost its royal border for a wee while mm -hmm. and then I think it got it back again. Mm -hmm. But everything goes wrong in Rutherland, it's Glasgow's fault. <laughs> it's only for the go together that everything's very wrong. I love my I love my house. I've been in that house forty five years. Uh -huh. My son bought it for me for the council and I'll be there to die. So you've been going back and forth across the river all uh -huh. your life. What's, uh -huh. what 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 does what part does the river play in your life? Um the Clyde, well, quite proud to know that I stayed beside the Clyde, like, you know, and the only sad thing was that was where my son got killed mm. beside the Clyde when he came out of school. Yeah. But um, no, I was very proud to you know that I stayed beside the Clyde. Uh, the Clyde. We just stayed right next to the Clyde, didn't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. Did you, uh, was it a place that when you you would go to play as kids? No, or? No. no, see I was brought up in Barrafield, Barrafield Street. So a bit further away, uh, yeah. I, I, I was, we were brought up in Barrafield Street. There was no Barrafield scheme then. It was only Barrafield Street. We originally came from Fielding Street, which was just at the bottom of Barrowfield Street. Mm -hmm. So um, I was in my twenties when I went to the Road, like right, no, right, right, right. I was married then. So looking back, or rather, yeah, looking back over a long period, things have changed, obviously, an enormous amount. Oh, aye, aye. Uh -huh. And what do you what do you feel about the the area now? Because it's it's also changed on on that side of the river. The the, the new builder just a bit further along at Oaklands uh -huh. and so on. What um, uh, what are you? What are your feelings about what's changed? I 
Well, I suppose in a lot of ways it's changed for the better, that people's got their own doors and things like that. But I really liked up the close. I, I really liked that. Mm -hmm. We've got a close community. And if anybody had a party, you didn't ask anybody, you just went. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it was a closeness. And as I say, the neighbours was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I had five kids, and it's one of the five kids up the close. But then again, we didn't have a lot of kids up our close, actually. I think mine was the only ones, really. Mm -hmm. Then my niece mm -hmm. moved in, there was the landing for me, and she had two kids. But uh, no, I'd say maybe it, it's improved a lot regarding that. But um, I don't know if it's, I don't really know if it's got the same. Uh, the friendliness is it had, has it? I've heard different reports that uh -huh. some people love it and other people yeah, yeah. not so much. Mm -hmm. I could have got a house in Fair Burn Street. For the first one that got offered one because it was a compulsory purchase of my bought house. But my friend stayed in the other one and I thought I could just go to the other one. And I went and I hated the house for 10 years. <laughs> hated it. <laughs> uh, and I didn't like the people. And then I met in with a nice guy, and it changed all my, my, my mind about the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I started to kind of settle a wee bit. So, he's not here then, he's not been here for the last eight years, but I think I'm getting accepted now, actually. <laughs> yeah, definitely. With his family. Yeah. 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 So what do you get up to now? What's had a, Tell me about your kind of, um, well, where you go for fun, what you do well, for... I'm disabled, so... I go to the sewing class, I go to the knitting class, I go to the Go Ahead uh, Club in the Church, uh, United Reform Church in Johnson Drive. Uh, I like, still like on holidays, uh, whenever I can. Um, but there's no much I can do other than go to the clubs. Sure. Like, you know, I usually go to it depend on somebody taking me and bringing me back. Sure, sure. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, uh, and I took cancer last year, so I had a bad time for a year. So, but I'm back on my feet, yeah. ready to go. Fantastic. I'm going to <laughs> Southport Monday, so I'm quite happy. And Liz, you were talking about the bingo. Aye, well, we're talking about the bingo, and I was in with my mother the other day there. We forgot to mention that that was the big social thing. So I was with the mother. Yeah, mother. So my mother. I think the men went to the pub, and the women went to the That's bingo. That's right. But. Carol be able to tell you for that. The Strathclyde bingo was me and her mummy's haunts. We went there for never with the money to go. <laughs> Whether <laughs> we, you had it or not. We didn't drink. <laughs> we didn't drink. That's right. And that was our, mm -hmm. our social life gone there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of drink back in the day. Maybe there still is. I mean, not you, I don't mean, but just generally. There was a Men, lot of drink. Yeah. yeah. Mm, it was yeah. an old-fashioned thing, I hope. Uh, I always say to my son, you don't have to go to the pub. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to, everything doesn't have to go there and sell take, run go to the pub. There are other things in life, and I must honestly say, they have listened to me. Mm -hmm. They still have a wee drink now and again, like, you know, but no divide men used to drink no. years ago. And there was a lot of violence with the drink with men. Yeah. They didn't treat their wife right and that, like, you know, yeah. bad memories. But, yeah. eh, as I say, I think things have changed regarding that. I think they? so. I think Aye. so. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't all roses back then. No, no. Oh no. But they were the good old days in all, weren't they? They were. Yeah. What good memories. Poor days. Mm -hmm. Poor, poor days. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of my stuff was hand me downs. Never knew what it was to go and buy a new jumper. Where I've got a wardrobe now that I can't get another jumper in. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've made up for the, <laughs> the poor years, mm -hmm. and I, I was a machinist. So I could make my sons their trousers, I was a trouser machinist, made my daughter her skirts, uh, I made my own skirts and trousers. Where, where, was, where were you working? Where was your...? I worked in uh, Meadows at Gladgow Cross, I was a trouser machinist in there. Uh, my sisters was trouser machinists as well. So did you get the train in or the bus? Or no, the tra it was a tram car, was tram number car. nine. <laughs> uh, so, but it was, uh, it was, I enjoyed working in the factory, I really did, and then I went for the factory shops. Yeah. I worked in the two dairies in Dermanock Road, which I've been... We all remember her. We all remember her. Folks still say to me, yeah, yep. 
you can't have the dairy in you, and that's 45 <laughs> years later. Oh, no. So I've always been ugly, I think. Not oh, all. come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> that's great, though, so, that's great. Um, but, you know, and I mean, now, uh, I crochet, I teach folk to crochet in the club, mm, don't fantastic. I? And uh, I've done for years and years and years. I've got a friend, sister Anne, so a nun in Kenya. And for, I'd say, the last 20 years, I was doing shawls. And whatever I made off the shawls went to Sister Anne in Kenya. I convinced her a few years ago, she was very ill, and I convinced her to come back here, which she did through ill health. And I still support her. No, I can't do the shawls any long. I do baby pram mats, and if I if it costs me three pounds to make them and I sell it at eight, the five pound goes to Anne. And it's been like that. I teach a lot of people, I've taught hundreds of people yes. in the club to Amazing. crochet. Yeah. Very and talented. I'm back in it and sewing again. Um, I'm back in it. I've had yeah, three yeah. Wee, uh, wee strokes uh -huh. and I couldn't machine for yeah, years. Just, but yeah. I'm back in it now. Made myself a nice message bag, didn't I? Oh, it was amazing. And you got to see her work. And a handbag. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, so I'm Fantastic. quite pleased with myself. Of course Good. you should be. Yeah. Sure you should yeah. be, yeah. It's a great club. It's a, that's my life. It's, and I love every one of the women. Mm -hmm. Lovely, great, lovely. Great crowd. And great they're crowd. so talented, isn't yeah, every one of them? Much. Fantastic. And anybody will help you then, won't they, Liz? Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody at all. If there's something you want to do and you have no clue how to do it, Phenomenal. Yeah, me. <laughs> no, you've done great. You have done great. So that's terrific. Let's thank you so much for sharing all that.